All right, in this statics video, we're gonna be talking vector addition. If you're using a Hibbler textbook, I've got the 14th edition right here, but if you've got an older 13th or, or previous version, it'll probably be about the same. It's gonna be the beginning part of chapter two. We're talking coplanar forces, uh, Cartesian coordinates, Cartesian vectors. Uh, if you see any of those keywords, that's gonna be the topic of this video. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about example problems like this one, where you have multiple forces uh, and their magnitudes and angles are all known. And then you're asked to add them together and find the resultant force that is the result of vector addition. The best path to solving these problems is gonna to be to take each of your individual forces, convert them into Cartesian form or find their component vectors, then do the addition. And then at the very end, you'll do a Pythagorean theorem and an inverse tangent to convert that back to a force and angle. So in this video, I'm gonna walk through an example problem for vector addition, and along the way, I'm gonna give you the three most common mistakes that I find students make in these problems and how you can avoid them. I'm Dr. Bernard, your engineering professor. So I'll start with FA, uh, which is gonna be the, the easy, kind of straightforward, basic one, right? So FAX is gonna be FA cosine theta, and then the y direction, FA sine theta. So since FA is 80 newtons, cosine 60 degrees, 80 newtons, sine 60 degrees, and we can answer there of 40 newtons and 69.3 newtons. Okay, so let's move on to force B. Force B in the X direction. I'm gonna start off and show the common mistakes. This is gonna be mistake number one, right? So X direction, cosine theta, Y direction, sine theta, 200, cosine 50 degrees, 200, sine 50 degrees. And let me go ahead and put a kind of a big red X there, right? So this was the first mistake. The reason that this is a mistake is that, you know, this equation here, F cosine theta and F sine theta, those don't always apply. And in fact, I might even recommend that you don't actually write that down in your notes, that Fx equals F cosine theta, because it's not always true. So Fx equals F cosine theta is true only when your angle is measured to the positive X axis. And so looking back at the original drawing, this X axis, right, this 60 degree angle was measured to the positive x axis, so that's why it worked for FA. It doesn't work for FB because the 50 degree angle is actually measured up here, right, to the y axis. And so when you measure angles to the y axis, sine and cosine get reversed. So the correct way to actually solve uh, the component vectors for force B uh, would actually be FB sine theta for the x direction, FB cosine theta for the y direction. In fact, I'll go ahead and write this as negative 200 sine 50 degrees, and in the y direction, 200 cosine 50 degrees. So one thing that I wanna point out is I did insert an extra negative sign in there for negative 200. The way you avoid this mistake, this F, you know, F cosine theta or F sine theta, the way you avoid making that mistake is to actually think of this as a triangle. So don't try to memorize a formula. Look at this as a triangle and just do the trigonometry each time manually. So for this FB triangle, I'll draw in blue up here on the drawing, right? Just look at it as actually doing the trigonometry for that triangle and think to yourself, which side is the opposite side? Which side is the adjacent side? For that 50 degrees, you can clearly see that for that triangle, the adjacent side is the y axis, right? Vertical. So that's why cosine theta is for vertical. The horizontal side is the opposite. Um, so that's why the sine, right, is opposite is going to be the x direction. As far as the negative signs, that's just based on whether it's going left or right. So I inserted a negative sign because FB is going left. I used a positive for the y direction because it's going up. And so again, the way that you get your signs correct, right, it positive or negative, and the way you get cosine versus sine correct is to not try to memorize an equation for this. Don't just memorize F cosine theta, F sine theta. Uh, look at each of these as their own individual triangle. Each force, each diagonal force vector 
is the hypotenuse of a triangle and then do the trigonometry by hand each time. All right, so let me scroll down the page a little bit and get some more room so we can work now on uh, force C. So I'm gonna start off here again with the mistake. So here is mistake number two. So FCX equals FC cosine 12 thirteenths and FCY equals negative FC sine five over 13. So again, let me go ahead and put a big red X through this. So this is common mistake number two. That five, 12, 13 triangle is meant to be used with similar triangles, not with sine and cosine. When I see this mistake happening, when I see a student use a similar triangle and sine or cosine together like this, um, this really worries me. So the first mistake about just mixing up sine and cosine when an angle goes to the y-axis, that's usually just a careless mistake by a student who often understands it's just easy to make on accident. Uh, this is a mistake though, this number two is a mistake that nobody makes on accident. It, it really exposes a fundamental misunderstanding of triangles, of, of uh, trigonometry and similar triangles. And this really is a case where students only make this when they're just trying to memorize the equations or just trying to learn how to solve the problem without actually understanding why solutions work or when to apply certain equations. Um, so if you find yourself making this mistake where you do cosine of one of these similar triangle fractions, uh, I highly recommend you visit your peer tutoring center, talk to your professor, talk to someone else. This is kind of a warning sign for me. This is normally something I see from students who end up failing the class. Um, this kind of shows a, a fundamental misunderstanding and it's not too late. If you catch it early, if you recognize that you're struggling with those triangles, right? I think this mistake is probably the most egregious of the three that I'm gonna mention. And so if you find yourself making this mistake, get some help and do some practice. Just go to your peer tutoring center and ask them to draw 20 different right triangles and just solve for different lengths and angles on those triangles. Just get really used to doing the trigonometry again. It might be something that you haven't done in a while. And that'll be a way to, to actually understand you know, how to actually solve these problems instead of just trying to memorize an equation, which is gonna result in misapplying it in this way. So let me actually scroll down and get some more space so I can show how this similar triangle is actually meant to work, right? So that's the triangle you're given, five, 12, 13. And then we're also given that hypotenuse there, right, of 65. And we're looking for that vertical component and this X component. The way these similar triangles are set up is that the ratios of the coordinating sides should be equal to each other. 13 over 65 should equal 12 over your X component and that should also equal five over the y component. This is how you actually get uh, these fractions. And sine and cosine have nothing to do with it, right? So it's just a similar triangle. And in fact, it's faster than using sine and cosine. The reason we use this, these uh, 5, 12, 13, or 3, 4, 5 is another common one. The reason we use these triangles, it just saves time. You don't have to actually solve for the angle. You can just set these up and do a ratio. So if you wanted to solve for FCX, Right, you can quickly rearrange these terms and get that FCX is equal to 65 times 12 over 13. And now a lot of times we would have thought of this as being something like, you know, 65 cosine theta. And so what we're essentially saying is that that 12 thirteenths is essentially equal to, right, cosine of theta, right? It's the adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine theta and 12 thirteenths are equal to each other, right? 12 thirteenths isn't equal to theta, it's equal to cosine theta. And that's why you use either cosine or the fraction. You use either sine or uh, the fraction five over 13. So I'll scroll back up to the problem there and show that the correct solution uh, for this one would be that just FC times 12 thirteenths for the Y direction negative FC 5 thirteenths, just using similar triangles and not sine or cosine, right? Use one or the other, similar triangles, these fractions, or sine and cosine. 65 times 12 thirteenths, negative 65, 5 thirteenths. And we get numerical value here is of 60. And here, negative 25. And going back up, looks like I never actually wrote down numbers for FB uh, in the X direction, negative 153.2. And in the Y direction, 
128.6 newtons. So at this point, we found component vectors for each of our three initial forces. All right, so I'm underlining these six terms right now. So we just need to add those six vectors to each other separately, right? We add the three X terms and add the three Y terms. So we had 40 newtons minus 153.2 newtons plus 60 newtons, negative 53.2. And in the Y direction, 69.3 newtons plus 128.6 minus 25. And then the last steps are gonna to be to get the actual magnitude and angle. So right now we actually have a Cartesian vector negative 53 plus 172.9, right? So that vector represents the resultant. So to find the magnitude and angle theta, so magnitude will be a Pythagorean theorem of the x component squared plus the y component squared. It comes out to be 180.9 newtons. To find the angle, it's gonna be an inverse tangent FRY over FRX. So that's the inverse tangent of 172.9 over negative 53.2. And now we're coming up on mistake number three. There's actually, it's kind of two parts, so a 3a and a 3b. There's two very common mistakes uh, to make at this very last part when looking for this angle. Uh, the first mistake, when I type this into my calculator, I get an answer of negative 1.28. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a big red X across that. And so the mistake I made here this time was to use radians. Right, so for this course, we'll never use radians. It'll always be degrees every time, right? You'll see radians in math classes. In this class, it's always gonna be degrees. So you should be immediately suspicious. If you ever solve for an angle and you get an angle of like 0.5 or one or two, something very small, a very small angle, check your calculator because there's a very good chance that you are in radians. And that's the way you would check, or that's the way you might catch that mistake, is that if your angle is very small, be suspicious, after I change my calculator into degrees, now I get uh, mistake 3b. Uh, I get this answer. So negative 73.53 degrees. If you look at this drawing that I just made, it doesn't match the picture. And the reason that your calculator uh, thought that this negative 73 was correct is it actually can't tell the difference between that FR vector that's pointing up and left and this vector that's pointing down and right. Right, that's at positive 53 and negative 172.9. Uh, the two fractions, right, uh, 172.9 over negative 53.2, that fraction is equal to negative uh, 172.9 and positive 53.2. Right, those two fractions are equal to each other. Right, they're both a, a negative number with the same magnitude and your calculator can't tell the difference between them. And so it will choose um, to give uh, one angle or the other. In this case, it gave me negative 73.53, uh, but I actually want the other. And so the way to get the, to the other answer is to go ahead and add 180 degrees. And you then get a final angle of 106.47 degrees. And so the final answer for this problem, the resultant force is 180.9 newtons at an angle of 106.47 degrees. And I'll box that there. Okay, and one last step. Whenever we get to a final answer in statics, this is a very visual class. You can usually compare it to your initial drawing at the very beginning to see if the answer actually makes sense. So let's go back to the very initial picture that you've been staring at here at the top left part of the screen and see if this answer actually makes sense. So just looking at this drawing, right, the three arrows are not to scale, clearly, right? FB is 200 newtons, FA is only 80, right? So it should be much smaller. So if we actually kind of try to draw this to scale, if we try to add uh, these vectors together, we can see that if we start with FB, right, which is 200, and add FA to that, which is about 80, so a little less than half the length should be up somewhere around there, and then if we add FC, which is gonna be kind of down and to the right, again, kind of short, only about 65, we see that those three vectors when added should get us to about that location. If we add that result and check this angle, uh, that does pretty closely match our final answer, right? That theta looks like it's somewhere between, you know, 90 and 135 degrees. So 
we had an answer of 106. That's visually at least in the right ballpark. And again, since it's not to scale, it's kind of hard to tell for length. But that purple vector does look a little bit shorter than 200, but reasonably still kind of close. And so an answer like 181 seems to make perfect sense. So this should always be your last step whenever you finish a statics problem. Go back to your initial picture, see if your final answer actually makes sense. And a lot of times, since this is a very visual class with vectors and arrows pointing in different directions, you can usually get a pretty good approximation, or at least you can rule out something that's, that's wildly off. If we had an answer of like 45 degrees, we would know that that's definitely not right. And so now I want to sum up the three major mistakes uh, that I see students make all the time for this problem. Mistake number one is when you have an angle measured to the y-axis to use cosine and sine backwards. We're so used to fx being f cosine theta that it seems kind of backwards to do fx as being f sine theta. But when the angle is measured to the y-axis, then in that case, the horizontal component, the x component, is actually the opposite side if you actually draw the triangle. And so sometimes the x component should be sine theta. So the way you avoid this mistake is to actually draw the triangle on your drawing and use uh, the Sokotoa, right? If you like the opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, if you like that memory aid, right? Just actually think, is this side the adjacent or the opposite side? And that will help you always get your sine and cosine correct. Don't just memorize F equals, uh, Fx equals F cosine theta, right? It's not always the case. So mistake number two, uh, we saw when using the a uh, similar triangle was to use cosine and sine along with the similar triangle fraction. Again, of these three mistakes, in my mind, this is the most serious one because this is usually how I can identify a student that's just trying to memorize the equations and figure out which equation to apply to which problem, but it shows that they don't really understand how to use the equations. And the third mistake came when trying to get to the final answer, when going back to magnitude and angle. It's a calculator mistake. This mistake uh, kind of came in two parts. The first was to use radians instead of degrees. And then the second was to use the angle that is 180 degrees off of the actual angle that you want. And so the way to recognize this mistake is to do a little bit of graphical um, vector addition, right? To actually draw your vectors on your plot and show when you have your Cartesian form, actually draw that you know, in this case, my vector was going left and up. And then when I got my final answer that was negative 73 degrees, that's down and right. I knew that answer had to be wrong because it didn't match the drawing. And when that comes up, then it's very easy. Just add 180 degrees to your angle and then you can get to the correct answer. So uh, refer back to your drawing. That's the way to fix mistake number three. If this video has been helpful to you. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, during this semester, fall 2020, I'm going to be uploading videos for statics thermodynamics, and then later in the semester, around October, November, I'll also be doing fluid mechanics. So if you're interested in videos for either more statics or in thermo or fluids, go ahead and subscribe to this channel also. That way you'll be able to see each new video as they come out.